We have news on Quentin Grimes and a potential breakout season. And on top of this, we also have more news about the New York Knicks and the Toronto Raptors having a lawsuit. And we're going to jump right into it as we always do. So what's up, guys? My name is Chris, and we're going to waste no time. We're going to jump into it, starting with Quentin Grimes. Then we're going to go into the Toronto Raptors lawsuit. So let's jump right in. Here we go. Quentin Grimes could be having a breakout season on the way. Now, do I mean it's like a typical breakout season where you go from averaging 11 points, 25 points per game? No. What I mean is I think Quentin Grimes has a chance to really bolster his efficiency this year and become a 40% three-point shooter, an even better defender, and really show that he has more of a game than just that spot-up three-point shooting. And that's essentially what Grimes said. When Grimes was at media day, to not completely butcher the quote, but essentially what he said was, I want to show people that I am one of the best two-way players in the NBA. They've seen how great of a defender I am. It's time to show that offense. I love that. And when we look at this, Grimes was in the, he was in the lab with JJ Redick, one of the smartest basketball minds in the league. And JJ had to say, fun day back in the gym with Q. Doc Grimes. Q is an easy guy to coach. Work today on shot and footwork variability, creating space with cuts and one dribbles and being an athlete when spotting up. Excited to see the guy play this season. That's tremendous news. As we know, J.J. Redick is a basketball genius, and on top of that, one of the greatest shooters in the history of basketball. Also, he had a negative wingspan, which he loves to bring up. He's the only guy in history of the NBA to have one, so if there's anyone knows about getting their shot off, it is J.J. Redick. Quinton Grimes' number one thing about shooting is not that he's a bad shooter. He's actually a tremendous three-point shooter, but we've seen him lose his confidence. His confidence wavers a lot. It goes from very high to very low. And what I mean is that we have seen games where Quentin Grimes hits a few threes, then will throw up a pump fake, move to the side, hit a little pull-up jumper. The man has got a bag. He has not fully shown it, and it's not fully his fault. Because when you look at the Knicks, they're not exactly a team where a guy like Quentin Grimes, a guy who's really a 3 and D guy at the moment, is going to be able to show up and just sort of do his thing. Jalen Brunson is very ball dominant. He likes to work on the inside on top of being a 41.6% shooter from the three-point range. He does like to get inside, use his finesse. Julius Randle is mainly an interior scorer. He's an inconsistent three-point shooter, so it's very important that Quentin Grimes is a tremendous shooter. And then, obviously, R.J. Barrett. We've seen three-point shooting. There's games where he looks good at it and games where we beg R.J. to stop shooting the three ball, but it is okay. I fully believe that R.J. Barrett will get that under control, no problem. But for now, it is important that Quentin Grimes has an efficiency jump I would love to see that three-point percentage become the highest one on the New York Knicks team. I think that is very important for Grimes and his just overall confidence and something that would just be wonderful to see because when you look at Quentin Grimes, that is the guy who you want next to Jalen Brunson in that backcourt. For all the things Brunson does well, he's not the best defender in the world. He's not a poor defender, but he's not the best defender in the world. So I think it'd be perfect if the Knicks have a guy like Quentin Grimes who we know is an elite defender. The man got injured in game five of the playoffs and then gets a steal five seconds later to seal the game for the Knicks. And that was one of the most electric moments of the season. We know that Grimes is an elite defender. He locked up Donovan Mitchell, did a great job there defensively, and then went on and guarded some of the Heat's best players. He guarded Jimmy a lot. He was guarding Gabe Vincent, who was having a monster series and having a monster playoffs in general. And he really just showed up and showed that he is one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA. So if we can get that shooting to over 40%, that would be tremendous. Let's take a quick look at Grimes' stats just to close this out because they're really solid stats, especially for a fourth option. When you look, 11 points per game, three rebounds, two assists, and then that three-point percentage, 38.6% from three, he's right near 40% which is why I really want to see Grimes get there. I want to see him break the 40% mark and not just get to 40. I want to see him around 42, 43%. I have high hopes for Quentin Grimes as a shooter. He is one of the purest jump shots I've ever seen in my life. He's just, he gets hot. I mean, his first start with the Knicks, he had what, seven, eight threes against the Milwaukee Bucks, who are a good defense, who were a great defense that year. Like this is a guy who is, has really high potential to shoot this basketball and has shown that he can do it off the dribble too. So that's sort of what I'm hoping with Grimes is that we just see his bag deepen more. We see that efficiency go up because the usage rate is going to be too low for some major point change or anything, and that's fine. Hopefully one day the Quentin Grimes can really start to show up and show out that offense a little more. But for right now, for year three, what we need is him to be the best perimeter defender on the team and hopefully also be the best shooter and essentially play that Danny Green role that Danny Green played for so many years. 
And then maybe we'll see Grimes prosper off that. I think that he totally has the ability to. We've seen him been able to drive to the hoop. He's a nice reverse layup. His touch around the rim is unbelievable. So the guy's got talent. And I really hope that we could see more of his bag this year. That is my goal for Quentin Grimes. But now let's move on to Masai Ujiri. Nobody's favorite GM if you're a Knicks fan because the guy openly hates the Knicks. So let's jump into this. Masai Ujiri talks Knicks-Raptors lawsuit. And now here we go. Do you guys think that Masai Ujiri said anything positive about the Knicks ever? Because I don't ever remember him saying anything nice about the Knicks. And I'm not saying, oh, be nice to us. Like, I don't care. It's just the fact that we know Masai Ujiri hates the Knicks. So it's not going to be surprising to hear what he had to say when he was asked about the lawsuit at media day yesterday. Ujiri said, I'll start with the Knicks lawsuit. I think there has been one time in the history of the NBA that a team has sued a team. One time, go figure. I don't I don't know why he's playing the victim because essentially what happened is, and we'll go into this a little deeper in a second, but what happened was the Toronto Raptors hired a man away from the New York Knicks. And that was on a Wednesday. That next Thursday, and this is all according to Fred Katz, that next Thursday, what happened was the New York Knicks security found out that that employee was accessing the Knicks files illegally, and he then gave them to members of the Toronto Raptors organization, which is illegal, that is not allowed, that is lawsuit worthy, and in reality, if this happened, because obviously this is all allegedly, but if this happened, then the Knicks should win that lawsuit, and I don't even know what that means, I don't know what the Knicks get if they win the lawsuit, but essentially, that is the deal, so let's look into this a little more, because that's like the rundown but here's really what we have to say. The Knicks filed the lawsuit alleging that former employee, I could check with Azatam, if I butchered that name, I apologize, illegally took thousands of proprietary files with him to his new position with the Raptors. Azatam, who was hired away by Toronto this offseason, allegedly shared the proprietary information with several members of the team, including head coach Darko Rajakovich and player development coach Noah Lewis. Now, as some of us may know, Darko Rajakovich has never coached in the NBA before as a head coach. So it is very important that he gets every advantage possible for the Raptors because that is not an easy job to start being the head coach. I actually really like the Raptors organization outside of Masai Ujiri. I think they're run very well. They, there's no argument that they have one of the top three player development systems in the NBA along with the Miami Heat and San Antonio Spurs. You cannot tell me that they do not. I really don't have that much beef with the Toronto Raptors. However, Masai Ujiri hates the Knicks a lot and is very, very annoying I mean, this is the man that once said, yeah, and clap for this. I don't like the Knicks. I actually hate them. And then people started clapping. Why? Because one, it was something in Toronto and, you know, Raptors, Knicks, division rivals. <laughs> and also because Masai Ujiri is, I guess, sort of a loser who needs to tell people to clap for things or people will never clap for him. I don't really know. I now have beef with Masai Ujiri because he's acting like the victim here. When his employee stole documents from his former employer and then gave them to the Raptors. He gave them to the coach. He just said, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to steal documents from the Knicks, all the hard work that they've done, and just give them to Darko Rajakovich because Tom Thibodeau and this New York Knicks organization is full of veteran guys who have been in the NBA forever. And we're just going to give it to Rajakovich because he's never coached in the NBA and we're not going to do our own due diligence. We're similar enough to the Knicks because we both have isolation power forwards and a good defense. The one difference is the Raptors are completely devoid of a point guard to quote something that Troy once said on Raptors Digest. <laughs> um, but I digress. Essentially what happened here is we have seen the Raptors hire a guy away from the Knicks. He stole documents from the Knicks and then gave them to his new employers, the Toronto Raptors. These were over a thousand files. There was so much information that was taken. Who knows what it is? I don't think it's clear. I don't think it's public information. It will become public as the lawsuit continues. But as of right now, there is not that much info on what it is. But it's basically a lot of player development stuff. That's why it went to Noah Lewis, the Raptors player development coach. Because it's just a lot of scouting reports. If I had to guess, it's just stuff to know... It's a lot of information that the Raptors probably could have mostly figured out themselves had they wanted to do the work. However, they're too busy just having two different power forwards start on their team and then also having a small forward start at shooting guard. Meanwhile, that guy doesn't even want to be there. I'm obviously talking about OG Ananobi, 
who has done nothing to show that he has any interest in playing for the Toronto Raptors or Masai Ujiri. He's actually part of CAA, and we all know who ran CAA. It was Knicks president Leon Rose. So it'll be very funny if the Knicks are to get OG Ananobi through this. However, it will now never be through a trade. <laughs> But yeah, so that is what we have for today on this whole situation. Again, I don't really know how to talk about this lawsuit. I'm not a lawyer. I took one sports law class in college and slept through most of it. But here's what we are going to basically wrap this up by saying. I don't know how the Knicks could possibly be in the wrong for this. If there is any, any, any truth to this. If this is true even a little bit, if if um, Azatam stole, like, five documents from the Knicks, that's still stealing. It's still illegal. It doesn't change that. I have no idea what the Raptors' punishment would be, but if I had to guess, we're just going to stop hearing about this. It's going to get settled out of court or something somehow, and nothing's going to happen to the Raptors, and everyone's going to forget about this in a few years, and it's just going to be something that is put in textbooks for sports law classes in the future, which sort of sucks because I would love to see Masai Ujiri get, like, disbarred from the NBA or whatever. I think that would be hilarious because the guy is just an open hater of the New York Knicks, and I don't see why. I don't know what the Knicks did to him. Maybe they didn't give him a job. Who knows? I don't see why anyone would not give Masai Ujiri a job, because as I have said, he is tremendous at his job, despite the fact that he lost his point guard, who won a championship with them, to a team that is basically just the Western Conference version of the Raptors in a way, and by that I mean they're a play-in team that, I don't know, desperately needs to rebuild or something, but at least the Rockets know that, and the Raptors don't. So it is what it is. No shade towards the Raptors. I actually do enjoy watching Toronto Raptors games. I'm a big fan of Pascal Siakam. So that is really all that we have to say for now on this whole debacle. And make sure to tune in, guys, because we are about to announce a new member of the Knicks Digest team. The three of us at some point are going to get on live streams together. Troy and I are trying to make it work. We are trying to get on live streams. Get ready for post games, guys, because this NBA season is coming right around the corner. Preseason is a few days away. I cannot wait for more basketball. So, guys, make sure to like this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. The content is going to go through the roof. And once this season starts, we are going to go crazy with it. So, you do not want to miss. Make sure to tune in. Thank you so much for watching. And you guys know where I'm going with this. Remember, go next.